So you've just seen Tim Berners-Lee introduce the concept of linked and open data, and he did this about three years ago. Right now you can already see companies and governments around the world embracing the idea of open data. But what about a university? What can a university do with this concept? I'll be zooming into our university, the TU Delft, and see what they can do with open data, and what already has been done. Because, for example, course material, think about lectures and also recorded lectures, they are already available through the OpenCourseWare. OpenCourseWare consortium around the world is making lectures from different universities available. It's a perfect example of sharing knowledge. But also raw research data. The 3TU data center allows a way of uh, bringing together research raw data that's been researched by people on a university and putting it out there on a server so other people can reuse it. But there's one thing that's missing in this equation, and that's the practical data that we are confronted with every day. It's our timetables, it's our schedules, it's information about the campus we're on, and it's numerous other things. Why isn't it available? Right now, if you look at the university and how they are offering the data, this is probably what you think of. It's Blackboard, our portal where everything is squeezed together. This is where the university thinks you should go. But this is where we actually are. Everybody is on their mobile phone, on their tablet, on Facebook, in Gmail, syncing files through Dropbox, basically everywhere. Why isn't the university here? Well, actually, they're trying to be here. There's a TU Delft app for both iPhone and Android, and it's providing some insights. But it's, it's, not, it's, it's not everything. It's not the best. And that's because there are a few problems. I've, I've come across three problems here that basically are the problem for a university. For example, let's look at the devices people are using. The, the TU Delft regularly does a mobile survey. They're checking on if, uh, what kind of phone people are using. In 2009, and it was, I think, November or December 2009, 60% of the students had a smartphone. They redid the same survey just over a year later, at the beginning of 2011, and it was already at 80%. So the normal conclusion would be, well, so everybody's moving to a smartphone, so the university should be moving to a smartphone. Um, if you look at the numbers, there's a problem here, because smartphones have different platforms, they're not compatible. If you look at the numbers in 2009, most people had an iPhone, and a lot of people had a Windows phone. If you look at the same picture one year later, suddenly everybody's on Android, nobody's on Windows anymore. Just imagine the university where the decision maker just thought, hey, we should invest in iOS and Windows, and a year later everything's finished, and suddenly all students are somewhere else. The university simply cannot keep up with this. They don't have the manpower, they don't have the budget, and they don't have the knowledge to keep up with this trend. But there's something else. When a university, or basically any big corporation, wants to build something, they have to think about all the people that are going to use it, all students and you have to come up with one solution that suits all these students. But think about what Hildo Bell told us in his talk two months ago about the law of student diversity. Every student is different and has other preferences in how to use tools, uh, what they want to do. You can basically compare this to building a car. Some people want to have a sports car, it goes really fast on the highways, etc. Some people prefer driving off-road. Now try imagining building one car that suits both their needs. They might be able to use it, but they'll never be happy. And then there's a third point. The university is trying to motivate students to... <coughs> <coughs> sorry. The university is trying to motivate students to become entrepreneurial, to build their own solutions, try to make a business out of it. There's an incubator for that. But students want to start with something they're familiar with, they're confronted with in daily life around the university. But they cannot because the data that we have to use for it is locked up in big systems built by big companies that are only focused on making money and making universities pay huge service fees. Companies like Blackboard and, well, you know all about them. But if we look at these three problems, do you think students can solve them? I think so. I, f I found a few examples to show you that students can solve this problem. Just a general example, the Dutch Railways, a few years ago. The iPhone was just introduced, there were some first apps, and a student from our university traveled to the university by train every day. And he wanted easy access to his most important data, which is, are there any uh, 
uh, delays for the trains and what's my actual planning. This is the only page that was offered at the time. And the Dutch Railways realized they should come up with something, but it, it took them a while. So what he did, he just built him something for himself. He built an app, put it online, he built it for himself. It was the perfect solution for him, but a lot of other people liked it as well. At the same time, the Dutch Railways tried to build something. They came up with this. They probably brought together a big group of people, they all had their inputs, and there's the big screen of all the information nobody wants, because all we care about is, are there any disruptions, and when does my train leave? And then there's something else. The student took three weeks to build it and to put it out there into the market. He just was sitting on his room, behind his computer, building it together. The Dutch Railways took over a year of specifying the requirements, finding a contractor, getting it together, testing it, testing it, testing it, and finally there's the big launch, and everybody still sticks with the other app. And this guy was selling it, and he actually had a lot of money out of it. But what if we take this to our own university? And this is where I'm going to our own solution. This is the timetable interface that was presented two and a half years ago as the new interface for students. It worked. It was an HTML web page. But every time you rechecked, you had to reselect every, all your courses. You couldn't export it to your mobile phone while we, uh, or your digital calendar. While we've just seen it, everybody has one. And within one or two days, somebody came up with this. A student just built a website that, that pulled all the data off and offered it in a digital format. It's a very specific solution, only for a specific group of students. But for them, it was great. A week later, there's a full solution, a full software solution that downloads everything and syncs it. But still, the university is trying to figure out how are we going to solve this. Uh, back then, I was, the, uh, <coughs> I was the in the faculty student council at my faculty. So I was responsible for complaining all the time about the lack of decent information. And the university came back with exactly the problem we, we've seen before. We don't have the knowledge, nor the manpower, nor the budgets to fix this. Do you happen to know any students that can do this? Well, that's when I said, together with some uh, fellow students, OK, we're going to try this. We're going to do this. And when we finally got access to the data, we've been able to come up with my timetable, which is still the main interface for timetables at our university but in the meantime has spread to other universities around the Netherlands, Belgium and the UK. And right now this solution which was developed because we finally had access to the data is serving almost 200,000 students with their schedules on a daily basis and they're synced to their mobile phones, to their digital calendars. It's just great. So, we know there's a problem. Uh, there's basically three problems. The university can't keep up with these developments. Um, there are students that want to solve them but they don't have access to the data. Um, and there's a solution, and that solution is an open data API. And this is basically what Tim Berners-Lee has been talking about, just opening up the data through the HTTP protocol. And I'm not going to dive very deep into the technology here, but an API is basically providing data, not in the document form, but in raw data form, so that somebody <laughs> with knowledge of programming can take the data and reuse it. And actually, everybody in this room probably comes across APIs every day because our most important social platforms, either Facebook or Twitter, are totally relying on APIs for all the apps that are used all around the world. So this is a proven solution. But to implement this, there needs to be a change in mindset at the university. A university is like a big corporation. When they're thinking about IT, they're thinking about enterprise and connecting everything together. And it's all about data integrity. Nothing can get lost. There should be uh, checks on everything. Well, how does that look? I'm not going to ask you to understand this, but this is what you think about. If you want to play around with something like this, you're probably going to get lost the, the minute you see this. Because the only thing I'm trying to show you here is how would you request information about a course by sending a course code and getting back some information. If you look at how this is implemented in APIs around the world, instead of this, you're just looking at this. It's basically, hey university, I want information about a course, and the course code is TI-1200. And the response would be not a filled screen, but just this. And as you can see, if we do it like this, people will immediately understand it. We'll see, hey, I have this data, what can I do with it now? So if there was this API, what can we do? Um, right now, this is the TU Delft iPhone application. And there are some applications in there that have been developed. It's all powered by Blackboard, so I don't even want to know how much money that costs. But 
These are very basic applications, and there's so much more that can be done with this if you give students the opportunity. And then it won't be powered by Blackboard. It will be powered by students, and it won't be just a few basic information things. It can be practically everything. But we've been focusing for the last few minutes on the obvious information, timetables, grades, information about campus. But what if we take it a step further? Solutions we didn't even think of yet. For example, look at TextYard. TextYard is a concept developed by students in the United States. They were basically broke, but they had to buy books for their courses. And at colleges around the US, it's, it's pretty regular that there's a campus bookstore where you would buy all your books for all your courses. But it was pretty expensive. What they did was hack together a website which pulls all the data from the bookstore, lists it by this course needs this book, and then checks online stores like Amazon for the same book and see what the price is. So as a student, you go, you go to this website, you enter your information about the courses you attend, you hit find your books, and it tells you, well, if you order the same books at, for example, Amazon, you save maybe even 50, up to 50% of the costs because Amazon also offers uh, second-hand books, etc. And those guys did it totally for free because by referring people to, to Amazon, they even made money. So they made money, helped out students, and solved all the problems that I mentioned before, built something cool. But the same thing is happening at our university. There's a startup called Calendar42, and they're also building something to help out students. It's still in development, but their goal is to build a calendar that's not just a plain calendar, but a calendar that adjusts to your life and helps you. But for that, they would need access to your personal timetable. So together with them, we did a pilot with my timetable where students are able to allow access to their personal timetable to Calendar 42. So if you go there and say, OK, you can have my timetable, you're presented with a dialogue saying, well, is Calendar 42 allowed to access my schedule? You say, yes, that's fine, and they can get it. And at the same time, they get information from other sources. They get information from the, the academic calendar, but also from the Delft calendar, where events for all students are presented. And they're going to connect all these data sources together. And they can do that if the data is available. So these are just some examples, but there's so much more. And I can't think of everything, but just, just imagine what would be possible. Maybe an interactive campus map where you could real-time see what's going on around you, what, what courses are taught at what faculty at that time, uh, where you would go to buy a drink at that time. Maybe what's the, the menu of the restaurant that's around the corner? Is it better at the EMCS faculty or should you go to the, to the library or the aula? Maybe people want to connect Facebook to data from students. So if you get the highest grade on an exam, you can share on Facebook, and everybody can see, I got the highest grade for this exam. I, I'm, I'm just thinking of random ideas here. And we can think of them. You probably have your own ideas. If everybody thinks of this, we're getting somewhere. But right now, we're just focusing on ourselves, on our university, which is 17,000 students. It's cool if you can build something that helps out these students. But what if we take it a step further? What if other universities take the same API and try to bring their data into the same format? I mean, every university has timetable information, has grade information, has course information. And it's not that different. It's maybe, maybe it's put in different boxes, so it's in a different format. But we can bring it together in the same format. And then if you build something, it's not 17,000, it's already 34,000 if you look at the other technical universities. But if you look at all the universities just around Holland, you would already target over 200,000 students with just a single idea that maybe you hacked together with a few friends. And this is basically what happened with my timetable, because we connected to a timetable system that the university in Delft uses, but it's also used at other universities. So we've been able to take our software and link it to their timetable systems since we had access. But we didn't stop there. Some universities used other timetabling systems a timetable is still a timetable. It's about a lecture that is happening somewhere at some time, and it's uh, thought by some teacher. So at other universities, we connected the same application to a different system. And those students are all having the same experience of their uh, schedules through my timetable. So basically, what can we conclude here? We're back to the three problems. Universities can do it by themselves, but at our, at our campus, there are students everywhere that can do this. 
They can't build something that suits everybody's needs, but there are students that can build something for themselves and help out other students. And, most important, students are able to build their own businesses. We've proven it. Uh, Dennis with his iPhone app for the Dutch Railways proven it. And basically everybody can do that. So the question is, can we make this happen? I think we can. We just need to motivate the university to make this possible. And there's only this small step that they need to take. There's only moving from this enterprise locked up scenario through some parts that are exposed through this API. And it's only, it can be with small steps. You can just start with some small things that are already available. For example, the, the TU Delft app. It, it already uses uh, map data of the campus. You can already see this is, the, this is where the bus stops are. This is where the faculty is. If you start with things like that, and my timetable supports it, maybe we can go to the grades, just step by step, increase it to a new level. We can make this happen. Right now, these are some of the things I told you about today. I've put up some other uh, uh, notable examples. Studier Snell is a website where they index all the courses and bring together course information like summaries and, uh, uh, and slides. But what if, through this system, you could build, for example, a collaborative cloud-sourced note-taking system where, where everybody who takes lecture notes can combine their notes to one big summary. I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of random ideas here. Basically, there's so many possibilities, but I need you to think with me to show the university these are the things we want to make happen. And we can make it happen if you give us the tools. So if you go home today or if you have some spare moments, think about it. Think about what kind of data does the university have that I want to use and put it so out there somewhere. There's the, the TEDx Dell Facebook page, there's Twitter, there's, there's people are keeping track of it, and I will be discussing this soon with the head of IT at our university, and if we are able to convince him, it's gonna get started here, and it might be spreading through the Netherlands, and then we know that it started right here at our university. And that's the idea I wanted to spread with you today. Thank you.